Welcome to Wild Seat. Some are born with beautiful appearances, and others with average looks. But there are also people who, from birth, look completely different from everyone else. This is the story of a girl who was born with body hair covering her entire body. She was rejected by her parents but deeply loved by her nanny. Her life will not be easy, she will face bullying, mistreatment, and even exploitation. Do you think she will overcome all the challenges due to her physical appearance? Stay until the end of this captivating video summary, and you will find out. Gustav, the train station chief, falls in love with Ruth, a music teacher who recently moved to town. The two become husband and wife a year later, and Ruth becomes pregnant. One night, while Ruth is on her way to reunite with her husband, she stumbles and falls to the ground. A woman passing by discovers her and immediately alerts Gustav. He takes his wife to the doctor, where the baby is born, but sadly Ruth loses too much blood and passes away. When Gustav sees his daughter, he asks the woman to take her away, as he notices the baby has unusually thick fur, like that of a lion. Initially, Gustav cannot accept it and even suspects that the baby has killed his wife, so he avoids getting close to her. Then, Gustav walks away in the snow, crying and brokenhearted. Before anything else, he must name the baby, but Gustav is still sad and very grumpy. The doctor suggests naming her Eva, as this baby is different from the others. Later, his wife's funeral takes place. During the service, Gustav hears someone whispering about Eva's appearance. However, this woman loves the baby very much despite her strange fur. She immediately looks for a nanny named Jana to take care of the baby. Hannah has also suffered a loss. Her newborn baby passed away prematurely. Hannah is surprised by the baby's appearance, but upon hearing her cry, her motherly heart is moved, and she gently picks her up. Days later, Gustav's co-worker comes to deliver some documents and sees the baby. He looks at her with a scared and worried face. Soon after, the colleague immediately talks about this with an acquaintance who works for the local newspaper, and the journalist rushes to write an article for publication the next day. This news spreads quickly throughout the village, and some people begin to look at Gustav with suspicion and even avoid him. Upon arriving home, Gustav wants to keep his daughter Eva hidden from other sight, forbidding Hannah to go near the windows and take her outside. Days go by, and due to her confinement, Eva's skin becomes pale, and her crying grows more frequent. So, Hannah asks Gustav that Eva needs to go outside, she needs sunlight and fresh air. The next day, Gustav buys a baby stroller and designs a map for Janet to take Eva on specific routes. Soon after, Gustav hires a city doctor to treat Eva, hoping to eliminate her excessive fur. After examining her, the doctor gives him the bad news that this condition is very rare and has no cure, warning him never to cut her fur, as it would grow back much coarser, posing a danger to the girl. Seven years have passed since Eva's birth, and she has become a lovely child. However, her father keeps her locked up at home, preventing her from going out and enjoying the outside world. She often watches the neighborhood children playing in the yard through the window. Eva longs for the outside world. Sometimes she pulls back the curtains, but her father has forbidden it, and when he catches her, he locks her in her room. Every day, she looks at pictures of her mother, sharing her sadness. She has a passion for math and studies at home. It's now Christmas, and Eva and Jana decorate the tree at home. Hannah tells Eva that when she was a girl, every time Christmas came around, she would wear a beautiful dress and go to the village to attend the party with her father, and the Christmas tree in the square was much prettier than the one at home. Hannah tells the story with great enthusiasm, but Gustav uses the excuse that the village tree lacks decorations so that Eva doesn't get her hopes up about leaving the house. During dinner, Eva tells her father that she also wants to attend a Christmas party, but he tells her that if someone sees her, they will laugh at her. The next day, Gustav buys Eva a pair of beautiful shoes, and Hannah sews her a red dress. At night, Eva excitedly puts on her new dress and shoes, and finally, Gustav agrees to take her to town to join the Christmas party. Although some people are surprised by her appearance, others tell Eva that she looks very beautiful today. If you're enjoying the video, please give it a like. It only takes a second and it helps me out a ton. However, during the magic show, the magician uses Eva's fur as a tool to make the audience laugh, which deeply offends her. Then, 
An angry Eva throws an object at him. Due to this situation, her father quickly takes her away from the party. After this, Eva no longer wants to leave the house. Sometimes she studies quietly, but other times she gets in a bad mood and yells. One day at the train station, a new telegraph operator named Sparky appears. He is a very optimistic young man and gets along very well with Eva. He even teaches her how to generate telegrams, discovering that Eva's memory is exceptional, as she only needs to do it twice to retain it. That day, Gustav sees Eva generating telegrams. Eva tells her father that she wants to be a telegraph operator, but he does not fully agree. Shortly after, Hannah tells Gustav about sending Eva to school, but fearing she will be discriminated against, he ultimately refuses. Then, Hannah and Gustav end up arguing, causing Jana to leave, quitting her job and leaving Gustav in charge of Eva's care. Eva cannot bear that Jana is gone and wishes for her to return. One day, utterly depressed, Eva uses scissors to cut her fur, but Gustav stops her in time. The next day, Gustav realizes that both Eva and he need Hannah to come back home, so he goes to look for her to apologize and beg her to return. Hannah eventually agrees, but on the condition that Eva can attend school. On her first day of class, Eva is mocked by everyone for her appearance and is even harassed by several children. When she gets home, Gustav asks her how her first day went, but she tells him it went well, pretending to be happy. Years later, Eva finally becomes a very beautiful girl. At dinner, Gustav tells Eva that he has found a medical research institute with the best experts in the country, and they will go there so she can be treated. Eva and Gustav say goodbye to Hannah and board the train. Eva has never traveled before and is extremely excited about the scenery she sees from the train window. They eat in public for the first time in her life, and Eva now has a lot of confidence in herself, no longer worrying about the stares of others. Once their journey is over, they arrive at the research institute, but unexpectedly, in the workshop, the scientists examine her as if she were a monster and even roughly cut strands of her hair for study. Eva ends up stressed and overwhelmed, fainting. Upon returning home, Eva is deeply depressed, breaks the photo of her mother, and even asks her why she gave her life with this appearance. One day, she meets a young boy by the lake. The boy doesn't look at her with strange eyes and invites her to have refreshments. The two often play together, and Eva develops feelings for him. But soon after, she discovers that he has another friend. Her first love breaks, and she is left very sad. On the other hand, in the public accounts of the telegraph office that Gustav manages, there are accounting errors and missing funds without explanation. Gustav is then questioned about it, but Sparky, out of appreciation for Eva, decides to confess guilt on Gustav's behalf. In the end, Sparky is penalized with the loss of his job and salary. But before leaving, he tells Gustav that Eva is a mathematical genius and that, with her skills, she shouldn't be just a telegraph operator and can aspire to much more. Eva can't accept that her only friend is leaving, but with resignation, she can only follow the train as it departs, leaving her deeply sad. Soon after, a circus group arrives in town. Gustav takes Eva to see the show. On stage, there are many people who look like Eva, and their outstanding performance receives a great ovation. The circus director sees Eva and wants to invite her to join the group, but when he proposes it to Gustav, he refuses without hesitation. Eva, who was listening in the next room, waits for her father to leave and goes in search of the circus director to ask to join. Shortly after, Hannah finds the letter Eva left her, but it's already too late. Eva has already left town. Many years later, Eva and the circus travel to many places performing, and nobody looks at her strangely. Eva meets many friends and feels very happy every day. She also saves the money she earns, and over time, through her efforts, Eva becomes a university professor, gaining respect and status. One day, Eva receives a distant letter with the sad news of Gustav's passing and returns to the town to attend her father's funeral. She then visits her old nanny Hannah. Upon seeing her, Hannah is surprised. Eva is a completely grown-up and refined woman, and Hannah is very happy to see her happy. At the time of their farewell, Hannah gives Eva a gift that her father left for her, and then the two embrace and say goodbye. Hannah smiles happily as she watches Eva leave on the train. Eva discovers that the gift her father left her is a photo album of her childhood, all of them hand-painted by her father. Each drawing contains deep love, 
and then Eva breaks down crying. The love of parents in this world is incomparable to anything. This is an inspiring story that makes us reflect on the marginalization many people, especially children, suffer simply for being different from others. But the adventure doesn't end here. I'll see you in the next summary video. Let's go.